Hey friends, welcome back to Whiskey and Wit. I'm Whitney, and today's video is going to be three DIYs that are both upcycles and sustainable, so stay tuned. So in honor of today being Earth Day, I wanted to try to find some items around my house that we were either gonna throw away or recycle and repurpose them into decor. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. I've got a few different items that you probably have at your house. I wanted to give you some ideas on how you could repurpose that. Hopefully this is a fun way that you can craft with some of those items instead of having them end up in a landfill. So let's get started. So we're gonna start with these two different boxes. I used a Kleenex box and then a leftover Keurig coffee box. We've been needing that lately, all the caffeine. So starting with this box, this was from a value pack of K-Cups, but you could use a cereal box, you could use a cracker box, you could use a box, really any cardboard box that you have. I went ahead and trimmed it down to size. It was a little too tall for the area that I wanted to use it, so I just took my scissors and cut it is not straight, but it doesn't have to be because I'm going to cover it with fabric. So then for this particular one, because I was going to cover it with burlap, which you'll see in a minute, I wanted to give it a base coat of some white chalk paint so it had a neutral backdrop. So I just went through and did two light coats of the Waverly chalk paint just kind of up to where I knew I was going to need the coverage. Then I just took some leftover burlap. I had this leftover from a burlap wreath. This is from Hobby Lobby, but you can get this stuff anywhere. You could also do two layers of the Dollar Tree burlap if you happen to have that on hand. But I just went through with my glue gun and wrapped it all the way around so that the whole box was wrapped in the burlap fabric. Now these are totally customizable, so you could honestly use any fabric that you have. If you have some old dish towels, if you have some old sheets or pillowcases there are a ton of different things that you could repurpose just look around your house and see what you have to use speaking of what you have to use i have this fabric left over from a christmas diy it's red ticking fabric from burlapfabric.com and i just went ahead and cut a piece to size you want to make sure that it's able to overlap like how you would measure it for a christmas present as you're wrapping then I went through and kind of gave myself a makeshift hem in the front and then I glued that down to give myself a starting point because I wanted the inside to be covered. Then I trimmed off the excess on the outside and stuck down the edges and honestly if you can sew go ahead and do this however you want. This was just a quick way that I could do this without having to sew and looks good to me. So I left my edges, I cut them straight, and then I just kind of gathered them on each side. Where I'm gonna put this in my house, the ends didn't need to be super finished, but you could also add a strip over the top just to make them look super finished. I hemmed the back like I did to the front, and then I just added some glue to wrap the edges around so that all of the edges were kind of finished. So then once I was done making sure everything was glued down, I did cut some strips to add to the sides, but honestly, I decided that I didn't need them, but you could totally add them if you're going to be able to view your container from either side. And then I just took some jute twine nautical rope that I had left over from another project and I tied it on to finish it off. Now this would be perfect for a bathroom. This particular size box actually fits one roll of toilet paper and then also some room freshening spray. So this is perfect just to hide on the shelf, kind of a nice guest amenity. But Personally, I'm using this on our coffee bar because we really needed a kind of little trash can area to throw our K-cups. And so this is perfect. I just threw a paper towel in the bottom to catch all those grounds and we can toss those in there. When it's full, we can throw it away. So here's the before and after. I am super excited because Alex had mentioned that we needed something like this at our coffee bar station and I was able to make it for free. Now let's check out the Kleenex box variation. So this one was very similar to the other one, except for the bottom, instead of that burlap fabric, I used some nautical rope. So I had just a couple small pieces of the Dollar Tree nautical rope left over. You could use jute twine, you could really use any type of twine that you have. 
and I pulled the pieces apart so I had three times the length because I knew that I was going to need to cover this box. So then I went through and started at the back and wrapped everything around with some glue. Sometimes when you wrap things like this you don't need as much glue but I didn't want the Kleenex box to show through so I made sure to cover all of the areas by using glue to make the twine stick together. Then for this one, I created a big rectangle, hemmed the edges, and then I cut in the corners so that I could create a kind of different variation of that liner. So did the same thing as the last project. I glued the front hem down, tucked everything in, and then I ended up gluing the back piece. And then what I did on either side is I took my two tails and glued them down and cut the extra fabric so they just laid down quite nicely. And then after I did that, I took the piece that I had cut for the end and just laid it over the top. Again, if you're a sewer or you're a lot better with fabric and cutting and all that stuff than I am, have at it however you would like to. It worked out perfect for a person that is not skilled at sewing like I am. Every time we touch, I feel at home There's no way I'd ever let you go Will you put your hands in mine? I didn't worry about the bottom not being covered, but I did want to finish the top, so I just took some Dollar Tree jute twine, wrapped it around a few times, and tied a little bow to finish it off. So this is now in our master bathroom. I really needed an organizational basket on the shelf. I have our extra towels here and then I'll probably also tuck in a couple extra things so that it is out of sight, but it's also easily accessible in these shelves that we have right above the toilet near the sink. And here's the before and after. I don't know anybody that could compare now moving on to these containers, the first one that we're going to work with is this 7th generation disinfecting wipe container. I'm sure you've got something like this at home. So the first step is to remove that sticker. What I ended up doing was peeling it off, you can just rip it off, and then I used some glue gun or you can use nail polish remover to get rid of that sticky. Once that glue gun set, I took my Cricut tool and kind of scraped off that stickiness. I removed the lid and then I was ready to go. So the first step that I did is I added just a really light layer of white Waverly chalk paint. And the reason I did this was to give my other paint something to stick to because it's a really kind of shiny plastic. I taped off equal horizontal stripes so I could start my buffalo check pattern. This you could paint all one color. You could definitely wrap it with scrapbook paper as well if you don't want to paint it. I was just looking to create something similar to my buffalo check picture that I get questions about all the time. So once you have everything taped, I painted it with some gray Waverly chalk paint, which is the color elephant, let it dry, and then I peeled off my tape. So what I would do is make sure that when you put on your painter's tape, don't push it down as hard as I did. Some of my white peeled off. Now, honestly, because the container is white behind it, I didn't have to touch it up too much, but as you can see, it's peeling off a lot of that white paint, so you can just kind of forego that headache if you don't push it down as hard as I did. Once your horizontal stripes dry, you're going to repeat the same step for vertical stripes. Same thing, don't push your tape down as hard as you would normally. You just want those clean lines. Went through, painted it with that elephant gray chalk paint once again, and then let those lines dry. Once your vertical lines are dry, you're gonna go back in and tape them horizontally. And I will leave a video down in the description where I break down my buffalo check painting technique a little slower. So if you want to check that out, you can. So then everywhere where your paint isn't, once you replace those horizontal pieces, you're going to go over with some black Waverly chalk paint and that creates your overlap black squares for the buffalo check. 
Now the second that you're done, give it maybe two or three minutes to start drying and then peel your tape off because if you wait too long, then it's really going to cause an issue with the paint coming off. And as you can see, I had a little bit of chipping going on, but I just went back through with a small brush and touched it up. It was no big deal. I maybe had one or two squares that peeled off, but I just went through and was able to fix it rather easily. After everything dried and I got everything touched up, I went through with some Dollar Tree jute twine, wrapped it around the top, gave it a tie, and added some Walmart lamb's ear to finish off the look. With everybody using disinfectant wipes like crazy, I thought this was a great repurpose of this container and also it looks a lot like my Buffalo Check picture that I get questions about all the time. And now on to the glass containers. I used a dill pickle jar and a parmesan jar. Whatever you use, throw it in some hot water for 10 minutes and use a scraper. The sticker will come off super fast. For this first one from the pickle jar, the goal is to make it look like milk glass. So I went through with my glue gun and made dots all over in a straight pattern. I did straight lines down and straight lines across and then dots kind of diagonally in between. The kicker here is to get rid of all of those little kind of flyaway pieces from the glue gun. You can use tweezers if you need to but then get that all out of there. Now I originally took them outside and spray painted them white. However, it didn't give me the look that I wanted. So I came back in after one coat of spray paint and gave it two coats of Waverly chalk paint. It gave me the look I was going for, but if you're a spray paint person, you could probably totally make that work. I just used a foam brush for this, got in the little nooks and crannies, and it gave me the more matte finish that I was looking for. I added some more of that Walmart lamb's ear. That stuff is just fire for farmhouse decor. You can throw it in anything. And then I added some jute twine to the top just to finish off the look. Now for a second option, this kind of faux birch wood looking one, it was made out of a smaller Parmesan jar that we had. We made Alfredo sauce, so I figured I'd reuse that. So I went on Pinterest and found an image of some vases made in the same style. And so I just used that as a guide and used my glue gun to draw. You could pull up an image on Pinterest like I did, or you could do Google images, etc. But I just went through and drew as best as I could a kind of bark looking pattern. Granted, you guys, I cannot draw to save my life. I can make things digitally, but drawing not so much. And I think this turned out pretty good. So I think anyone can do this. Same thing with that. Make sure you get rid of all the little kind of flyaway hair things from your glue gun. And then same thing. I sprayed it with the spray paint, but then finished with the chalk paint. I really like how this looks. This would be really awesome for Christmas decor as well. You could add some glitter, make it look like snow, all the fun stuff. But with that lamb's ear, a little bit of lavender from Walmart, I will link that all below. And this really could go anywhere in my house. I was sticking at places to style for these shots and I was like, I could leave this here. I could leave this here. Same with this milk glass container. They turned out super great and I'm excited that they were literally free. These were going to end up in the recycling and I'm so glad I was able to give them kind of a second life. When I originally set out to do this video, I was thinking, let's find some stuff to repurpose. I'm pretty proud of how this stuff turned out. Sometimes you make some DIYs and you think they're going to be great and they kind of flop. These I'm definitely going to find spots throughout my house. Some of them are already being in use like this in my bathroom. And I really encourage you to look at the items that you have, not only in your craft stash, but also things you're going to recycle or throw away and see how you can repurpose them for your decor and happy crafting. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this inspired you to create some green DIYs here as we head into springtime. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite project was. Also be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't done so already so you won't miss a future Whiskey and Whip video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!